I'm going to Iceland. Oh my God. vlogging stage again where I feel like I can't vlog in public um, there's the city hall of Reykjavik if you were wondering is it city hall something like that as a cat I feel right at home um, but basically it's the next day I haven't vlogged in a while because I'm staying with a friend that I know from way back we went to school together it was just really fun. We hung, we hung out with our friends and had like a really fun night. Um, and like, I don't really want to vlog too much here, so... I think I made a friend. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably gonna go up the church in a minute. There's this huge church in the middle of Reykjavik. Morning, I was still in bed. He called me just in time when the sunlight comes. He said I was asleep, I didn't do too well. Would you be a friend and take a walk with me? My friend's been telling me that I should let you go. You broke a lot. Hey guys, good morning. It is the 10th of June, Friday, and I'm going on a snorkeling trip in the Silfra Fisher and I'm going to a cave as well, to a magma cave jumper thing. So come along! It's a very gloomy and grey day in Reykjavik. So the day started out by going into this cave that is basically a lava tube. It's about a kilometer long, so not too bad. Um, apparently the definition of a lava tube is that it is more than 15 meters long and that at least in some point of it or in some part of it you can reach complete darkness and we did this actually which was really hilarious like somewhere after a few hundred meters we all turned our headlamps off and we're sitting in complete darkness you can you could hear the dripping of the the dripping of the water from the ceiling and you could hear people breathing very loudly all of a sudden because your senses started to improve but even after 15 <laughs> minutes because we were sitting there for quite a while you could not see your own hand moving in front of your eyes which was such an, a fascinating thing oh collapse but after the sauna was first formed by yeah, that sense basically okay. and uh, the cooling period of the lava tube is what four, four years wow yeah it's a few years yeah. Okay, so we're gonna go here. Here we're gonna have to throw a little bit, but not too much, because it's only maybe three, four meters. People do the ninja rope. I don't understand that, but they, <laughs> that's what they say. <laughs> but you can go like this, just slowly, 
Put your your leg and your and your behind. Yep. Or to, but it's only a couple of meters. So are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready. Stephen sure all this thing would go I guess I'll think about it when I walk with you so this fissure in Zilbra is a crack between two tectonic plates so basically in the Thing Valley National Park the tectonic plate of North America and the Eurasian plate um, they are drifting apart and so there are a lot of... Th this is basically the whole thing that... Why Iceland has so many volcanoes. Um, and earthquakes and, you know, geysers and hot springs. Um, but in this national park, you can see really well how it's drifting apart, like, right in front of your eyes. Apparently it moves two centimeters every single year. And somewhere between those two plates, there's... A huge crack that goes down so low that it filled up with water and there's now this very slow current stream that you can snorkel in. At some point I actually looked over something that seemed like the edge of a, an underwater cliff and it went so deep down that I kind of had a case of vertigo for a minute because it was so fascinating like how that drop literally just opened up and it felt like it was gonna suck me in but obviously it didn't but I was absolutely epic just those colors and the just everything just amazing to this really interesting kind of performance or conference or meeting about um, this cool structure called Rockall, which is basically a new island that formed um, between Iceland and the United Kingdom. And it's a very small island, you can't live on it. But that kind of brought up the idea with a few people because so many nations are like fighting over who it belongs to now, like, oh, is it going to be British or is it going to be Icelandic or is it going to be, like, Danish or Norwegian or, like, they're all, like, trying to make arguments, like, about, like, why it should be their island. And that's, that kind of brought up the discussion with some people, like, what makes, what would you do if this would, like, be a new nation, even if it's not, like, you can't live on it. But, like, what... Just in general, what does it take to build a new nation? And that was really interesting. And they're setting up these workshops now in Reykjavik where you can like go and like just write down your thoughts or tell them about the things that come to your mind when you think about what could be abandoned. 
as a social construct that we have now in a new country or what should be like established or like just very very interesting conversations and quite simply put um creatively sketching is a lot easier if you have an empty canvas and uh we took rock hall to be ours and we invite other people to come and, and, and basically use our empty canvas to um, project what they what they find to be wrong or good or whatever uh, in their own daily experience with society. Um, so in that way, it's it's easier for people to sort of grasp in a in a, in a sort of um, scale model what they're basically experiencing, what what they would like to see in the world, rather than uh, things they want to get rid of, things that annoy them. Um, and we think that's a far more productive and playful and, and fun way to, to deal with social and uh, global financial uh, technological problems. And that's like just, that really sums up my stay in the city very nicely because it's just so full of like spirit and like ideas and crazy mindsets and like variety of people and ideas and like yeah i'm repeating myself but like really Reykjavik is like i didn't expect it to be like so like out there and vibrant and colorful but it really is and i'm so happy that i got to know the city in a way that i wouldn't have like otherwise as a tourist because i stayed with a friend and i like met so many of her friends and like locals and and just it's it was so amazing i'm gonna go to sleep soon Tomorrow I'm going to take a heli and fly over some geothermal areas and just have a, like an awesome day I guess and then I'm going to get my car um, in the afternoon and drive to my first campsite. So join me for that and take care. Hope I see you soon. Bye.